Hello everybody, this is Cameron Snow. I'd like to welcome you to the second video in our petrophysical analysis series. In this video, I'll be going through how to calculate your clay volumes from the neutron density, gamma ray, and SP curves. Uh, analyzing clay volumes is one of the first steps in any petrophysical analysis, and the reason for that is because this calculation will really trickle down throughout all our other calculations. Uh, your clay volume calculation affects your porosity, which in, then in turn will affect your water saturation, and both of those then play into the net reservoir and net pay uh, cutoff uh, criteria. So it's it's really a cornerstone uh, calculation. Um, you know, and clay volume is, is important for a lot of fundamental reasons. Uh, high clay zones are notoriously difficult to frack and they're hard to keep propped open uh, due to things like propent embedding. So it's important that we recognize these uh, very early on in, um, in any analysis that we do. Uh, one of the things I, I want to differentiate between uh, here is uh, the difference between V-shell and V-clay. So V-shell uh, technically means the volume of shell size particles, while V-clay means the volume of clay minerals. Uh, I know that may seem like a trivial difference, uh, but it's really the latter that's more important to us because that really plays into the elasticity and uh, the ability to, to frack and keep the frack open. Uh, and so, so that's why we're really more interested in looking at the clay mineralogy. Uh, so let's get started with the analysis. Um, I'm going to be doing this analysis using Dynamics Petrophysical Insights platform, but you can use whatever software you like. Uh, the principles are all the same regardless of your platform. Uh, before we get started, I just want to familiarize you with uh, the layout we have here. So in the top left, we have our uh, parameters. Uh, below that, I have a cross plot of our neutron density displayed, and to the right, I have a well log panel. And then walking through this well log panel, I have my gamma ray curve, my SP, uh, my density neutron curve, and then I have the results here. So I have my uh, V clay from neutron density shown in red, V clay from gamma ray in green. And then in the next track, my V clay from gamma ray and my V clay from SP. And then finally, I have my final V clay curve. Uh, so with that said, let's get started. Um, so within uh, the Dynamics platform, there are three default methods that are available to us. That's, uh, you know, the V clay from neutron density, V clay from gamma ray, and V clay from SP. Um, and the order that I work through them is I, I work through the neutron density V clay first, and then I use that to calibrate my V clay from gamma ray and my V clay from SP. So uh, let's start doing some setup work here. So one of the things to uh, help make it a little bit quicker is we can use our lithology presets. So we can select uh, based on on these what type of, of uh, lithological uh, units we have. So, you know, this is uh, an area where the Alston Chalk and the Eagleford are in play. So, you know, I'm gonna, gonna set these appropriately here for a chalk reservoir and an organic shell reservoir. And then underlying us, we have the Buddha, which is a uh, tight limestone. And we, we see that it sets a lot of the parameters uh, for us initially. Now, of course, you know, these are just defaults and, and we want to uh, customize these. Um, and in doing this, I'm going to expand out the advanced parameters so we can see all the options that are available to us. And uh, like I said, my preference is to start on the uh, neutron density. So, you know, right now we have it checked to be used in all zones. And, uh, you know, there's two ways we can adjust parameters. We can adjust them in the cross plot and we can adjust them interactively on the log plot. Uh, here I'm going to be doing it on the cross plot. And so right now, uh, looking at this, I have my, uh, what are termed my pre-zone and my stats top zone uh, here active initially. So I'm just going to uh, hide that and I'm going to, you know, set these points, uh, set these points out here. And so <clears throat> what, what I see is that, you know, I'm adjusting my clay point here. I really want to bound the data with uh, my clay line here. And then I'm going to use this point essentially as a calibration for uh, the rest of my, my data points. 
And so now I'm going to move down to my next formations, and I'm just going to choose my three Alston Chalk formations, the Alston, Middle Alston, and Lower Alston. Um, let's hide that. And uh, you know, let's uh, let's do a little bit of adjustment here to uh, to do this interpretation the way we the way we like uh, doing it here. Um, let's see, and and I'm actually going to move this down a little bit because I remember where I picked my my clay point off of the uh, <coughs> you know when when I had those shells that made it a bit more obvious. If we want to see those again, of course, you know we can turn that on for a bit of a reference. And we can see, you know, where where we want to uh, to drop that that parameter. So I'm gonna gonna clear those now, and then uh, I'm gonna go to my Eagleford formations. Um, let's see, and we're just going to, uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna drop these in a in a very similar location, and then finally we're going to uh, we're gonna set our endpoints for the Buddha here. And, and this is, uh, you know, part of where you set these points comes from experience, and uh, part of it comes from, you know, the the calibration to this field. But but really, the the idea here for those of you that are that are new to this plot and how you set parameters on it is you want to set your um, your clean point here, uh, you know, at the at your matrix density for this formation, your matrix density and neutron values. And then you want to try and uh, really get the bounds on your data with these uh, with these two points. And it, it really doesn't matter how far out you drop these. What, what matters is really the slope of these lines and the, the difference of the angle between them. And so once we have that set for all our zones, which I've just done here, we now have... Uh, our neutron density from clay interpreted. <coughs> the next step here is to uh, is to look at it for our gamma ray. Now um, I'm going to use the a linear gamma ray method here. That's our default, but we do have a lot of other options. And the idea is that we want to make our gamma ray uh, match up to to what we see here, and, and we can do this by sliding parameters. So I'm going to start by setting my clean point, and I like to do this in a reservoir interval, and so I'm just going to drag this over here, and we see we get a, a good match, and then I really like to, to set my, my shell out, point out a bit farther. Um, and so now I'm going to take these values, and, and I am going to uh, just do a little bit of copy and paste work here to set some of my other zones up. Um, and I'm actually going to just put this one into the default because I think that's kind of a good value for all of them. And uh, then I'll, I'll set my Buddha here individually. And so now we've got a really good match between our V clay from gamma ray and neutron density. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, your V clay from SP, uh, I'm always a little bit wary about it. This actually isn't a... A bad match that we have here you know there's some tweaks that we could do I generally like to set it but I often don't like to use it unless it's my data of last resort so I'm actually just gonna turn that off here and now uh, what we see is we have our resulting uh, V clay line um, you know and if we want to uh, do some additional work on this uh, you know on the cross plot we can we can do some fine-tuning but one of the things I like to do is uh, it's just check to, to make sure I'm getting good correlation. And so I'm going to look at my V clay gamma ray versus, let's say, my V clay from neutron density. And I want to look at that for all formations. And what I see is I have a, uh, a really good um, trend in here where it's you know pretty much a one-to-one -one slope. And, and that's what we'd expect since we tried to calibrate these together. So uh, with that said, you know, that is a, a very quick and dirty um, analysis of V-Clay. You know, ideally we'd like to bring core into our analysis, etc. But I think this gives you an idea of how to go about a V-Clay analysis uh, on your own wells. Um, you know, if, if you're uh, interested in trying this out uh, in the Dynomics uh, Petrophysical platform, just reach out to me either on LinkedIn or by email at csnow at dynomics.com. Thank you very much, and I look forward to uh, speaking with you again in our next video.